go over for you just the top line highlights of what the prime minister announced. Essentially, as you can see, this is the third night, I think, this week that we've been carrying a press conference from the prime minister and his ministers, the third set of sanctions that they have now put on Russia. The first set of sanctions, probably uh, at least in name, some of the most significant today, the first, sorry, the first sa uh, sanctions announced in this round, I should point out, uh, they are sanctioning Vladimir Putin himself, as well as his chief of staff and his foreign affairs minister, Sergei Lavrov. Uh, they are also also sanctioning uh, officials, political officials in Belarus. They are announcing, the Prime Minister announced his government's support of removing Russia from SWIFT, which, what, which is kind of like a technical mechanism uh, for communication among global banking institutions. There is some disagreement among European countries about whether or not they should uh, put that sanction on Russia and Canada tonight. The federal government has come out in support of removing Russia from SWIFT and the Prime Minister announced and his ministers that uh, the Canadian government will match donations through the Red Cross to help with the humanitarian crisis that will likely unfold in Ukraine uh, to a maximum amount of $10 million. I want to bring in my colleague Murray Brewster who is listening alongside uh, me to this press conference and alongside all of you. He's of course CBC's senior defense writer. Hi Murray, good to see you. Let's start with what I just talked about. Hi, what's it, what is in this, and and what might, and then we'll get into what what wasn't talked about or what was the questions that weren't answered. First of all, this new this third set mm -hmm. of sanctions, I, I should say, done in concert with what we've already heard from Europe, the UK, and the United States just a bit earlier today. Uh, anything that that jumps out of you about at, about this package specifically that was announced? Well, it's very significant that they're sanctioning Vladimir Putin and uh, uh, his foreign minister, Lavrov. Um, I don't remember a time when almost an entire government uh, was sanctioned. Um, and I, I, I think we'd have to, and it puts them on a very notorious uh, list because I think uh, the the last major world leader who was sanctioned, I think, was uh, Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. And we're going back a number of years, but I do stand to be corrected on that. But that's that's extraordinarily significant. The other part that I found significant in the in the prime minister's announcement was the was the statement that Canada supports the removal of uh, Russia from SWIFT. And mm -hmm. essentially, politically, he's putting this out into uh, the public because uh, we've heard that from behind the scenes, uh, the prime minister has been very supportive of Britain's call to remove uh, Russia from the SWIFT banking system. The European allies, um, true to form, so it seems, uh, have been uh, reluctant to do that. President Biden yesterday uh, pointed to the uh, European allies and said one of the reasons that the U.S. hasn't taken this action is because of European allies. That highlights a bit of a split among allies in terms of uh, not only the sanctions regime, uh, but uh, European allies have also been, in some respects, foot dragging uh, when it comes to the arming of Ukraine. Uh, we know that uh, we know that Germany uh, didn't quite have to be dragged kicking and screaming into uh, into uh, supplying uh, uh, aid, but it it was certainly reluctant. So politically. That highlights that there, there is a little bit of daylight between allies. Um, the Europeans are very um, are very reticent because a lot of the business ties. Some of the other aspects of what was talked about today that uh, that stood out was uh, the fact that uh, Minister Anand has uh, um, put a little bit more detail around the notion that 3,400 uh, Canadian Armed Forces personnel, uh, soldiers, uh, Air Force personnel, and sailors. Uh, could be heading to uh, part of uh, NATO's uh, response force. Earlier today, we heard from the UN Secretary General who said that parts of that response force have been activated. It's significant that Minister Anand has said Canada has not yet been asked to contribute forces, but uh, they've put all the pieces in place should that happen. Um, Canada has been uh, a long time uh, supporter, uh, contributor to this response force as it was nece uh, as necessary. And we have to uh, also make a very clear distinction for the viewers and the minds between the NATO response force, which includes 40,000 troops, multinational, uh, from the very high readiness task force, which the uh, Secretary General of NATO spoke about today. That's 5,000 soldiers. It is a task force that is um, required to deploy within five days. The over 
all larger NATO response force is supposed to deploy within 30 days. So those are some of the uh, some of the things that stood out for me. That's very helpful. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate your time and your analysis as always. You're welcome. Today is a, a, the third day that the federal government has come out announcing a third round of sanctions against Russia. Today, uh, the sanctions were very significant. In fact, they target Vladimir Putin himself, his chief of staff, as well as uh, his foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, to talk a little bit more about the potential impact of these sanctions. I'm joined now by Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie. I should say joined again. Thanks for coming back into the studio. We appreciate it. It's good to see you. Uh, let me ask you about the potential impact of the sanctions that not only have been announced today, but the past few days. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I listened to the President of the United States who said something kind of interesting when pushed on the idea of how impactful the imposition of these sanctions could mm -hmm. be. He said, well, give it some time, give it a month. Mm -hmm. All the analysis I've read said they're strong, they're severe sanctions mm -hmm. that Canada and its allies are levying, but they won't take effect right away. They might not deter him in the short term. Do you agree with that assessment? And if so, how problematic is that, that it's going to take a month? People like that MP don't really have a month. Well, we know that when uh, it is a strong message that we're sending by imposing these sanctions, all, uh, you know, the uh, United West, so the UK, the US, uh, Europe and, and, and ourselves, but we know that economically speaking, it will take some time because obviously we're doing these asset freeze and then people bit by bit that are affected by these sanctions will realize what is going to happen. But clearly the fact that we're going ahead today by imposing sanctions on Putin himself, which was your question yesterday, yes. um, was, uh, is a very, very strong message. Why? Because President Putin has been Bashi, in, in, in power for more than 20 years. He has done atrocities to his own people. He has been against many of the opposition leaders. We know that from Navalny. But now is at another level, which is going against the very sovereignty and territorial integrity of his neighbor, which was a sovereign nation and a democratic nation. And so that's why we wanted to go and go at him directly. We have never done that. But this is a very strong message we're sending. You talk about, um, you mentioned that was my question yesterday, and I had asked for where your government stood on the issue, because as you mentioned, you wanted to act in concert with other allies. I had also asked about SWIFT. You declined to answer then. The Prime Minister said today, no, actually the position of Canada is that we do support expelling Russia from SWIFT, which for viewers listening is kind of like a, um, a mechanism yeah. for international banks exactly. to communicate with each other. It's pretty important for the international banking system. What changed in the last 24 hours that the prime minister thought it uh, thought it okay today to come out and say this is where we stand in advance of other allies making that move? So, you know, I, the foreign ministers within the G7 have never talked so much to each other every day. I just had a conversation with Secretary Blinken again today, and last time I spoke to him was five days ago. I speak to my counterpart from Germany pretty much every day right now. Same for the UK. So everybody was saying that Nord Stream 2 could never die because of Germany. Germany killed Nord Stream 2, the very important pipeline between Russia and Germany earlier this week. Nobody thought we would go against Putin himself and Lavrov. We had been in discussions for now a couple of days to make that happen. Obviously, we're having conversation about SWIFT. And obviously, we're having conversation about other things as well. Because our goal is to suffocate the Russian regime. This is, we know that this is the time to put maximum pressure while people are dying in Ukraine and that the entire Zelensky government is sheltering right now. So that's why time is of the essence. I'm having another G7 meeting um, on Sunday. So it's two, seven, you know, within a week, we're having two G7 meetings. And so this is moving extremely fast. Given, though, the amount of time, as we discussed at the, the outset of this, that it will take for those sanctions to suffocate, as, mm -hmm. as you term it, mm -hmm. uh, the regime, let me ask you a little bit about another aspect of 
what Canada is being asked to do. And that, again, comes vis-a-vis -vis the interviews I've been conducting over mm -hmm, the past mm -hmm, few days mm -hmm. with people who represent Ukraine or who are in Ukraine. There is a very specific ask of Canada to do more when it comes to military aid. So mm -hmm. specifically send some ammunition, mm -hmm. uh, helmets, uh, uh, weapons. Will Canada do that? Well, so indeed, I've been in contact with the Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine, uh, with the Minister of Finance, with the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. And indeed, they're asking for that. They're asking for many things. And so we are processing these demands. And we've already successfully been able to deliver two, um, two uh, deliveries of lethal aid. Uh, and we are really looking at all the options right now. That's exactly why I spoke to my colleague, foreign minister from Poland yesterday, because we absolutely need to make sure that we work with Poland right now, because we know any forms of delivery of any types of equipment needs to go through Poland. And I take that point. I do have to challenge you, though, on how quickly your government is moving when it comes to lethal aid, because there had been a request a number of months ago from Ukraine for that. We had Andrew Leslie on uh, just a few minutes ago who commended the, you know, the number of troops, for example, put forth by the Canadian government, but made the point, as other military analysts have, that it took a long time for your government to deliver on that. And when it did deliver, it's not a whole lot of lethal aid. It could be a lot more. This specific question, I know it's being under, it's under consideration. When will Ukrainians have an answer about the aid that they are specifically asking for? So I know my colleague Anita Anand is on this right now. Uh, we had conversation earlier today together, uh, and we know time is of the essence. Uh, at the same time, regarding uh, our approach, we really wanted to make sure that we invested in diplomacy. But from the moment we saw and that intelligence was telling us that the threat was real and imminent, we move very quickly. And so we have been taking decisions really, really quickly in a very, very um, difficult situation, but I would say also improbable situation. We why, why is this improbable? To, to, to just challenge you again a little yeah. bit there, because you have described Putin, as we said yesterday, you know, in very specific terms mm -hmm. tonight again. Uh, lots of people who have been studying him have talked about how irrational he is. Was it a mistake to pursue diplomacy as long of as the not. government did? I understand no, the need to, to try it, yeah. but, but look at what situation Ukraine is in now. Yeah, well, that's why we did everything to support Ukraine. We were the first country to offer $120 million in financial support because when I went there a month ago, President Zelensky looked at me in the eyes and said, we need financial support. Our uh, you know, federal reserve is at $30 million, and people are starting to withdraw money from the bank accounts because of the, the, the instability. That was his main ask. And then afterwards, we came up also with $500 million more. Uh, that's what Deputy Prime, Minister, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland announced. Afterwards, we came up with lethal aid. We did every single step of the way. We were there. And you've, even you know, when, I, when I texted uh, the chief of staff of Zelensky a bit earlier today about the fact that we were going to sanction Putin and that we were working on sending more support, he said, Canada is our best friend. And that's our position. We've been there standing side by side with Ukraine. And so Canadians watching us can know that we've been supportive. At the same time, we know that President Putin has gone far, far, far greater than, than any form of scenarios. Do, do you think, as uh, Andrew Leslie said on our program tonight, that, that this is the, and I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember, I think he said, actually I do, this is the closest we have been to World War III in a very long time? Well, I'm very preoccupied by the security situation. That's why, Vashi, we're going with maximum pressure. Is it the closest to World War III? Well, right now, it is at the border of NATO member states. And so, should... Uh, should there be an aggression against a NATO member state, Article 5 is triggered. And an attack on one is an attack on all. So that's why... Do you think why, Putin will do that? Well, I think that he needs to really see exactly what's going on. And that, that is my point since the beginning of this entire crisis. The West need to, needs to be united. And I'm 
pleased to see in the, these very sad circumstances that the West is united because there's one villain, one threat. And so NATO, which had discussions even five years ago about the importance of NATO, NATO is extremely united. The West, the G7, is extremely united. We are contacting and communicating with each other every day. So I think this is helpful because obviously there is a security threat. And in that sense, I, I, I commend my former colleague, Andrew Leslie, which I like a lot, um, about his, um, his, his willingness to communicate to Canadians, his, his uh, assessment. And I know that there is a real threat. Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time, as always. It's I appreciate pleasure. it. Thank That's you. That's Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.